In this video, I'm going to introduce two very closely related concepts, both called closure. Before you watch this video, you'll need to understand some of the basic set operations, things like union, intersection, etc. And you'll also need to have a reasonably good understanding of relations on sets. So I'll talk about two different concepts of closure. And within each of those, we've got two commonly used terms. We'll usually say something is closed under some operation or property or something. And we'll also talk about the closure of a set or a relation. So the two key concepts will be closure of sets under operations and closure of relations under properties. And they're very similar, but they're not quite the same. So the first concept, is to do with sets. We say that a set is closed under some operation if when we apply that operation to elements of the set, what we end up with as a result is already a member of that set and will always be a member of that set. So if we think about the natural numbers, so the, the integers from zero upwards, if we take any two of those integers and we add them together, the result is another positive, or sorry, another non-negative integer. And so the result will always be something that was already in the set. So that way we can say that the natural numbers are closed under addition. However, if we were to take two natural numbers and subtract one from the other, then we can easily come up with cases where we end up with a result that is not part of the set. So if we take 1 and 2 and we subtract 2 from 1, we end up with negative 1, which is not part of the non-negative integers. So it's not part of the natural numbers. In that case, we say that the natural numbers are not closed under subtraction. Another couple of examples are the integers, so the positive and negative integers. They are closed under subtraction and multiplication as well. But they are not closed under addition because when we divide, sometimes we end up with a value that is not part of the original set of integers. So now we know what we mean when we say something like a set is closed under some operation. Now we will talk about the closure of a particular set under that operation. So if we have a set that's already closed under an operation, then it is its own closure. So the closure in this case will be another set. But if we get a set, say a set S, and it is not closed under some operation O, so like before we said that the natural numbers were not closed under subtraction, we can define the closure of S under O as the smallest superset that we can make of S. So a superset is just a set that contains the original set as a subset, which is closed under that operation. So just to reiterate, the closure of S under an operation is the smallest set that contains all of the elements of S, but which is actually closed under the operation. So obviously, before we talked about the natural numbers and addition, and we said the natural numbers were closed under addition. So the smallest set that has all of the natural numbers in it and is closed under addition is the natural numbers. So the natural numbers is the closure of the natural numbers under addition. However, if we talk about subtraction, we said before that we could do some subtractions and end up with elements outside of that set. If we include all of the negative integers into the natural numbers, the resulting set will now be closed under subtraction, since whenever we subtract numbers, we'll always end up with something in that bigger set. Now that set, the set of all natural numbers plus the set of all negative integers, is just the set of all integers, which we will denote using this double bar z notation. So we said also that the, the integers weren't closed under division because we end up with fractions when we divide some integers. But if we include all of the rational numbers into that set, then 
we do end up with something that is closed under division. Also, if we were to use the reals as a superset, because the integers are contained within the reals, we could also say that that is a set that contains all of the integers and it is closed under division. But it's not the smallest set, because there are some numbers that we include when we include the reals that are not necessary to close the set of integers. So the rationals are actually the, set, the closure of the integers under division, because it's the smallest possible superset. So the second concept of closure that we're going to talk about is the closure of a relation under some property. So it's basically the same idea, but it's slightly different, and sometimes students get them mixed up. So we say that a relation from A onto A is closed under some property, for example, reflexivity, symmetry, transitivity, these things are properties, if the relation possesses that property. So basically, if R is transitive, then it is closed under transitivity. Yep. So if we look at the set of 1, 2, 3, and we look at each of these relations here, we can talk about whether they're closed under reflexivity, symmetry, transitivity, by just saying, is the relationship symmetric, reflexive, and transitive? So what I would suggest you do is pause for a second here and think about R1, R2, R3, R4, and ask whether they're closed under reflexive, reflexivity, sym symmetry, or transitivity. So R1 is obviously not closed under reflexivity. It's obviously not closed under symmetry, because we've got 1, 2, but we don't have 2, 1. But it is technically closed under transitivity, because we don't have multiple um, pair ordered pairs. So we have no way to define you know, 1 maps to 2 and 2 maps to 3. So does 1 map to 3, because that doesn't exist in there. Similarly, you can look at R2, R3, and R4 and ask the same sort of questions. In the event that a relation is not closed under a certain property, then just like with sets, we say that its closure is the smallest superset of the relation that is closed under that property. So before, if we look at the set 1, 2, 3, and just the relation R is just the ordered pair 1, 2, we can see that that's not closed under symmetry because if 1, 2 is in there, for it to be symmetric, then 2, 1 has to be in there. So the smallest superset of R that is still a relation, which is closed under symmetry, is 1, 2, 2, 1. So in this case, R subscript S is the closure of R under symmetry. Now we said before that R was already, this, this relation here was already closed under transitivity. So the closure of R under transitivity is just R itself. And you can see that for reflexivity, we need all of the mappings from the original elements back onto themselves for R to be reflexive. So the minimum number of extra elements that we have to add in to make it reflexive is these three here. So this size 4 set is the smallest relation which contains all of the elements from R and is also closed under reflexivity. So therefore, R R is the closure of the original relation R under reflexivity. So from this you should have gotten a brief understanding of what we mean when we say the closure of a set under some operation. This will be an important topic because we'll talk about this a lot during the course. Or what we mean when we talk about the closure of some relation under a certain property.